despite all of the available technology and green materials available today, retrofitting an existing building is always a more sustainable option than new green construction. However, we need to ensure the strength and durability of the retrofitted structure over the entire design life. I hope all of us here today and those connected online would get this message endorsed by the speaker for this evening. It is a great pleasure for me to introduce our speaker today who is going to deliver her inaugural lecture as a professor in civil engineering. Professor Kumari Gamage graduated from University of Moratua in 2001 and she completed her master's by research specialized in structural engineering at Monash University, Australia. After completing her MSc degree, she returned to Sri Lanka and continued her career as a structural design engineer attached to CEC. Then she received International Postgraduate Scholarship, IPRS, sponsored by the Australian Government and Monash Graduate Scholarship from Monash University to pursue her doctoral studies at Monash University, Australia in 2007. She returned to Sri Lanka in 2010 after completing the PhD and joined as a senior lecturer at Department of Civil Engineering, University of Moratua. Her research interests are FRP technology, modular constructions, fire performance of structures and sustainable building materials. So there is a global demand for strengthening and retrofitting of infrastructure to meet the challenges with limited resources. So this is a critical aspect on infrastructure development in the local context and Professor Kumari has timely addressed the issues with her research. Her latest research at University of Moratua is aimed at developing new technologies for various applications within the country while contributing to the domain with new knowledge in the form of high quality index publications. So Professor Kumari published 31 research papers in index journals and 67 articles in indexed and non-indexed conferences mainly on FRP technology. Her research has been well appreciated in the form of research excellence awards starting from postgraduate publication award in 2009 at Monash University and several SRC awards since 2012 and she received three presidential awards in 2019 and 2020 for the research carried out in the years 2016 and 17. Today Professor Kumari will highlight her noteworthy contribution to the research and development in her inaugural lecture. So over to you Kumari. Thank you, Madam, for your nice introduction. Good evening to all of you. A warm welcome to all the Vice Chancellor, the Deputy Vice Chancellor, Dean, Faculty of Faculties of Postgraduate Studies and Engineering, Head of the Department of Civil Engineering, my colleagues, and all joining virtually to this event. Actually, it's a great pleasure for me to have this opportunity today to present this inaugural lecture. This lecture is dedicated to all supported me in this journey. Today I'm talking about a timely important topic, restoration of infrastructures using fiber and post-polymer composites and technology. So let's see why we need to restore the infrastructures. So our infrastructures exposed to environment, perhaps for extreme environmental conditions and loading cycles due to daily usage. 
So those things cause for degradation of materials and structures. Not only that, the change in demand is considerably higher than the date that of constructed. And sometimes the client's objective changes with design needs and also some faults in design and constructions. All these things cause for either demolition or restoration of buildings. But restoration, strengthening is a green approach and it will save the economy of the country. We all are familiar with traditional strengthening techniques. So the section enlargement system, that means we need to strengthen the foundation as well. And another one, famous one, is post tensioning. It's more popular in bridges. So we need special machineries. If we don't have space, so it's very hard to apply this technology. And another issue is while we are constructing, we can't use that premise. That means we have to find alternative path or alternative way for the daily activities of that premise. That directly affect on the country's economy. As a solution for these problems, ex externally bonded steel plates came into the industry, but with time we realized corrosion is a critical issue. As an example and as an invention by the engineers, fiber reinforced polymer strengthening technique came to the industry. Now it is popular due to high strength to weight ratio. So that means we can achieve high strength gain. No, no need special machineries. That means renovation phase is serviceable and superior material properties. High fatigue, environmental and electromagnetic rate resistance. Let's see a history of this application. Actually concept of usage came into industry in 1930s for small ornaments. Later on it accepted by the defense industry in 1940s and automotive and oil industry in 1950. Civil engineers apply, start to apply this technology from 1960s and the increase in acceptance has been recorded from 1980s. So that means more than four decades. In early days, these applications can be in mainly in historical structures, dome-shaped structures. This is mainly due to the flexibility. We can strengthen any shape of structure without adding any self to the member. So that means we can preserve the original shape. Then starters to spread in bridges and highway related structures. This is mainly due to serviceability during renovation phase and also high fatigue resistance and high strength can be achieved. In recent past, we can see many applications in buildings. But in our country, we can see only few applications only in buildings as I know. There are worldwide applications we can see in many developed countries since 1980s. Let's see what has happened to this technology in our country. A range of materials available and a range of different properties are noted. So we have to verify the material properties before application. Another one is another issue, limited technical knowledge on the system. So if we rely on basic guidelines pro provided in the design codes only, then we are ending up with peer poor detailing and premature failure have been noted. Not only that, if you are not preparing the surface properly in the construction phase, no mechanism composite mechanism there. So that is another issue. 
and the main issue is poor acceptance due to lack of knowledge so application with skills will save a huge cost spent on annual infrastructure development so these materials are in many forms rebars plates cables grids tendons and sheets depending on the application type the engineer can select the most appropriate type for their constructions so fiber reinforced polymer materials depending on their reinforcement as an example if if carbon are act as reinforcement then it's called carbon fiber reinforced polymer and similar way glass fiber reinforced polymer aramid and basalt but basalt fiber reinforced polymer are very limited because of the safety issues let's see what was meant by frp material actually it's a composite material it contains matrix and reinforcement so the reinforcement carry loads while matrix helps to protect fibers from environmental and mechanical factors so the fiber orientation governs the type of application so a range of materials with very high properties you can see here high elastic modulus very high tensile strength we can find all three types of materials with superior properties if we compare these materials with our steel common mm -hmm. construction material you can see comparatively they are having very high strength than this steel but cfrp in general 10 times higher than steel but more but actually we don't want such high strength so we can see many projects we are combining either supplies available for fr pv applications as well as external strengthening technique and the many countries they have provided allocation for fp design in their highway and bridge design codes so that that means we can see many applications in those countries today my main focus is fp external strengthening so we can use this technique to enhance flexural capacity of flexural members in bridges or slabs If we use single layer, we can achieve at least forty-five percent strength gain. But with proper detailing, it comes to ninety to hundred forty-five percent. So that means it's very important about the detailing in this technique because we can save a huge cost from a renovation project and can use for sheer enhancement, torsional capacity enhancement. And also confinement, confinement and bending capacities in compression members like columns or piers. So the application procedure is very simple, and all the guidelines are well documented, documented in construction manuals. And we can see that normally we have to prepare the surface. That means if we are having any defects such as cracks or damages. Thus, we have to prepare and make the surface clear, and then we have to expose coarse aggregate to have a enough roughness for the surface to be bonded. So we can use either either sand blasting or water jet. Then a thin layer of primer has to be applied on top of the surface. That's only for improving surface energy. For bonding, proper bonding. There are two methods, popular methods: the wet layer method and dry layer method. So, if you are following the wet layer method, most popular in our country, so we have to apply adhesive on the substrate and also the adhesive material, and then press onto the surface and dip into one direction to expel air bubbles entrapping the bond line. 
and also we can apply it of course uh, in completing the application and to for at least seven days according to monthly guidelines. Actually, this is relatively new research area, and there are many significant areas to be addressed for further development of this technique. So, FRPD by application, so high heat structures, composite structures, ground anchors, and highway and transportation related structures. In, today, in my presentation, I have focused mainly on strengthening of structural elements, concrete and steel structural elements using CFRP and GFRP. Let's see. How we have contributed to expand this technology? So I'm talking about four topics actually, mainly fire performance, service, short-term performance, and also fatigue behavior composites. So as I said, uh, there are many applications in regions, but limited in the so this is mainly due to lack of data available and the fire resistance of this system. So then the question comes, how we can ensure fire, is, uh, fire rate in of strength and member? What's the current fire resistance of these strength and members or the material behavior? If you see the composite actually having three elements, all three elements should work properly to have a composite action, that means for effective load transfer. So the substrate may be concrete, steel, timber, or masonry. And then the fiber and post-polymer material, either CFRP, GFRP, or AFRP. And the bond between these two materials. So that means if you want to assess the performance under fire, we have to know individual performance as well as the composite. So the first step, we approached cluster development. It was very good at 60% cheaper than the conventional cluster. And it didn't show any signs of failure or any uh, defects within the monitored period of two years. And it could lower the temperature two to five degrees in the tropical environment. Then the next step was to in develop the insulation for FRP and concrete applications. I think it was successful really well. And 90% of cost saving with 40% high efficiency we could be achieved with as an insulation to see FRP with respect to commercially available work the right insulation. It it is very cheaper than all those two products. And this is the best product, actually, when we are talking about previous two products. Then we further developed as an insulation. And it can save very, that means actually it's very cheaper and 95% higher fire resistance than the commercially available vermiculite insulation. So we did life cycle assessments and also energy saving aspects. And now this product, product is under commercialization. So now we'll switch to my second topic, service performance of composites. So many applications are in outdoor structures, but the code suggests a general reduction factor, more generalized one, 20% strength reduction because due to the lack of data available on environmental durability. But all we know, these exterior elements exposed to cyclic temperature, humidity, and also combination of all these things, including sustained loading, especially bridges, because many applications we can see in bridges. So we thought we have to assess the bond performance for this combination of effects no one has addressed at that time. So we 
tested a series of testing under different environmental conditions using accelerated testing. It covers all the weather fluctuations in the different parts of the world. And also we could develop a material degradation model, material model. It can predict the degradation with respect to the environmental exposure. So actually we found normally the TG, that means glass transition temperature is 45 degrees to 65 degrees epoxy adhesive. You can find it in the manufacturer's data sheet. But the TG of bond is slight lesser than the adhesive. It's around 40 to 50 degrees. If TG of bond is 15 degrees higher than the environmental temperature, we didn't observe any strength reduction even under extreme conditions. For extreme environment with high sustained loading, the reduction was less than 10%. But if TG of bond is lesser than this temperature condition, we found heavy strength reduction, more than even 35%. Actually, we never think this property is important when we are applying for our infrastructures. We normally look at elastic modulus, tensile strength, like material properties. Actually, they are having superior properties, but we don't want that much strength. Actually, we have to give attention on this little thing, that means TG, TG of the bone. If we can have elevated TG at least few degrees, we can have a stable bond. That means with very less reductions in service. Then the next question came, how can we improve the TG of bond to achieve this stable condition in service? So we can, we thought, okay, can we improve the TG of epoxy adhesive or TG of bond? Or can we replace the bond using cementitious adhesive? So the first we thought to apply the elevated temperature curing technique. But some situations the researchers have applied for some other uh, materials, products and strengthening samples. But we thought to see whether this technique will work with our composite. And this is the common application actually CFRP steel bond. So we thought to apply it for CFRP steel composites and see whether it works. Initially we did laboratory testing and found it works. But the next question is how can we give similar conditions in practice? Then our findings are useless because our structures are large. So then we thought, okay, so we have seen some in cold countries, they used halogen light system to elevate the temperature in structures. So the same concept we tried to develop for our applications. We designed a series of halogen lighting system to elevate the temperature near the strengthened member. And this is practically feasible aspect. And it works. And finally, after the end of analytical and numerical simulations together with the experimental program, we could find the correlation between safe environmental temperature, TG of bond and possible elevated temperature curing. So the, this works well for the TG of CFRP and steel bond. So then we thought, how will happen if we apply the same technique for TG of bond between CFRP and concrete. So, because in this case we have to select the safe environmental temperature because it might adversely affect on the concrete substrate. So we have, we tried similar approach and again we could find good results. So we can elevate the temperature of CFRP concrete bond as well using this technique. So that means this application will make a stable outdoor structure with good service performance. Then we switch to our next option. 
improving TG of epoxy adhesive. So we have seen pet fibers, that's a waste material and it possesses good material properties and thermal properties at elevated temperature even. So we thought to use basically PET fiber with some combinations to modify e current epoxy adhesive used in the industry. After series of testing, we found that product, well, the good product actually. So that works very well even uh, under ambient condition as well as fire condition. It can raise the temperature TG of bond normally 4 to 70 degrees. We use that adhesive, but we could raise up to 120 degrees. That's a very good achievement. And also under ambient condition, we noted 30% higher strength than the normal bond. So this provides excellent resistance. That means very stable structure with good performance. Not only that, if you are applying this one for buildings, we can save sufficient amount of insulation again will result in the low cost project. Then we thought to develop a cementitious adhesive system to replace the bond between CFRP and concrete. So we started trial with engineered cementitious composites and then we further develop it using fly ash and pet fibers after characterization a set of materials, possible materials. And at the end of trial series, we found uh, the best product and apply with the bond of bond between FRP and concrete and tested under ambient condition. Actually, it failed. Initially, it shows very, very low strength. And as I said, if the bond is weak, there are three failure modes. In that sense, the failure was noted the bond, the interface between epoxy adhesive and FRP material. So then, so we thought, if it's the problem, we have to improve that, that interface. We did number of attempts and finally we could improve the interface and achieve this more stable relationship under elevated temperature. So this is actually suitable for even little less strength. It is suitable for outdoor structures. But we realized that failure mode has shifted to the interface between concrete and ECC, modified engineered cementitious adhesive. So that means if you can improve the concrete ECC interface, that means surface energy, we can achieve, we may be able to achieve higher strength than this. So then, if you look at our service performance investigations, so we see there are many steel bridges even in our country, and some are corroded, and also renovation is well needed. So there are applications worldwide, but limited applications in tropical in the tropical environment. So we thought to see the bone performance on a tropical environment and we tested a series of samples under control accelerated environment as well as the open environment to tropical exposure and also some bonding arrangement. In this case we used non-corroded steel as well as corroded steel which covers four types of corrosions. Then if this is successful, it's very good for our bridges. And then uh, the short, uh, another topic, the same topic, service performance. And there are many circular hollow sections we can see in bridges, steel sections. But limited data available on durability analysis. So we conducted series of testing, analytical studies, and also numerical simulations, and, and uh, we develop design guidelines to strengthen such members. 
then there is our third topic, short term strength of composites. ACI 440 guidelines strictly recommends to do proper surface preparation before application of this technology. Otherwise, the composite action does not make into reality. So due to lack of technical knowledge in Sri Lanka, we saw many applications even on top of the plaster. So that gave me this concept. So I explored. Actually, I couldn't find. Even they recommend. I didn't see any quantification method. What will happen to the strength with the surface texture? So we s conducted series of testing to identify the strength gain with variation of surface texture. And found that the best suited techniques are sandblasting and water jetting. We didn't notice any strength gain if we apply this technology on top of the plaster. And also, if we can place a polymer mesh, so we can have enhanced flexural performance than all other systems. And the, the next concept actually, can we enhance punch and shear capacity of flat slabs? So this concept came into mind because of our university entrance. I designed this with a span of 6.8 meters and some because of some design changes, they have constructed with almost 30% higher span with the same design. So I was thinking if something happened, how can we renovate? How can we restore this? And I searched many possible retrofitting techniques, but I couldn't find. Then I thought uh, sometimes FRP technique will work with this one. Uh, there are many attempts done by researchers, but those didn't show a considerable strength gain. So we studied the mechanism, that means interface mechanism between column and the slab. And we developed number of configurations to see whether it works to enhance punch and shear capacity of flat slabs. So we noticed we can achieve 40% to 125% punch and shear strength gain with the selected configurations. If the slab heavily damaged, mainly the performance depends on the repairing material and also with effective arrangement we can achieve 30% to 90% strength enhancement. So now I feel like we are safe in case of failure. So the another short term strength issue. We can see many steel beams with circular hollow sections. But no limited studies and no guidelines available to strengthen in plane curved CFRP strengthen steel beams with circular hollow sections. So we conducted an extensive test program and also numerical simulations and analytical study. At the end of all these three studies, we could successfully develop design guidelines to strengthen such elements. And the other common application still have not been addressed. Out of lane curved CFRP strengthen steel IB. So we started to do investigation on such beams under combined effect of shear and torsion. This is actually due to industry interest. So a common problem in nerd slab system is falling of concrete cover. So actually we assessed the slab system and we did some investigations to see whether we can eliminate this cover problem in the nerd slab system. And another study actually, fatigue performance of the composites. So the common crack repairing method is crack stop hole in steel structures, especially for bridges. After attesting that crack using crack stop hole, there's another problem with time when it subjects to fatigue, reinitiation of cracks at the crack tip is a problem. So we thought 
if we can't again make a crack stop wall, it will reduce the strength of the section. So we searched, no one has addressed that issue, then we thought we will see whether FRP can handle this problem in crack stop holes. So in this regards, we need fatigue load testing apparatus. We thought to purchase, but the cost is more than 10 million of rupees. So because of that, we thought, okay, we will design. First, we develop our apparatus after thorough exploration of existing systems. Then did finite element simulations and identify critical sections and conditions in the uh, in interface. Then we could develop flexural fatigue loading apparatus. We could we spent only five hundred and fifty thousands of rupees. It's very cheap, and it it works very well. And we have calibrated it and started to do our testing under low cycle fatigue and we saw actually this system works well to add further state on further testing of crack stop, cracks in crack stop power but still still underway because we haven't done further analysis and there are the third one actually this is the current research there are many applications of FRP technique can be seen in strengthening waste water treatment tanks. But they have shown good performance even for four decades. When we go to quantify the strength degradation with respect to pH value, actually I couldn't find any data on the system. So we thought what will happen if the pH varies from 1 to 12? So we have, actually this is uh, current research. We have prepared an ongoing test program. And this is significant actually for the world community, international community, because no one has quantified this effect yet. So the finally, actually I had to acknowledge my students, all these works and innovations belongs to them. Without them, I, without their hard work and successful efforts, this work doesn't exist. So I'm so happy to say all my former students are very good researchers in different parts of the world. And my former postgraduate students, and they, are, they have published many research articles in index journals and conferences, but I have put only here their major contributions in top sources. And my former postgraduates, and the current postgraduate student, including one of my PhD students, he developed the fatigue load testing apparatus. I have to acknowledge him, also my current postgraduate students. Thank you very much for your patience and listening. Thank you, uh, Professor Kumari. It's nice to know that when you all enter the University of Moratua, that you are keeping us safe. Your, your efforts are you in our safety. Mm -hmm. And also to hear all the novelties. So as we can see, all our inaugural lectures, we are seeing both practice and theory and representing the strength of our young faculty. So um, in conclusion today, now we come to an end of another interesting uh, lecture. Uh, may I invite uh, Dean Faculty of Engineering, Professor Nalin, to hand over the token of appreciation to Professor Kumari Gamaki. Congratulations. So that brings us to the end of the third inaugural lecture. And again, we'll meet next month. Thank you, and stay safe, and uh, till we meet again.